Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK and I am thanking you for all for subscribing, sharing and liking my page or my videos and basically um, I just talk about any and anything that I think is of public interest. Um, most, of my, most of my vlogs are general in nature. Um, I don't have any um, legal background apart from being a PA in a firm of solicitors. So most of my stuff is through my own research, my own information. So anything I say, please do double check it and make sure you get an immigration lawyer before you make any um, life changing decisions. Now today I thought I've got so many topics to talk about, but I can only do, I don't want to overwhelm you or overload you and also myself. So I've picked out a couple of topics that I'm going to talk about today. Um, the first one is going to be about the changes of the benefits during 2019. And I am going to read them out in the order that they come out in. Some of them have already come out early 2019 and some of them are yet to come out. But by the time you turn around, they're here. So I thought I would let you know, just in case you weren't aware, some people, because they're not on benefits now, they might not take into account what has gone in the past. And especially with the change to child benefit. And there was one lady, she got um, a fine from the Inland Revenue for £5,400 because she didn't realise she had to pay the child benefit back. Um, she'd been taking, she'd been using it. I mean, I know she was over the threshold, but she'd been accepting child benefit for two years and didn't realise about the changes. So yes, you, some of you may know about these um, implementations and some of you may not. So hopefully somewhere within all of this, someone will learn something, including me. Okay, so we, 2019, we know that we've got the universal credit rollout. Um, the phased introduction of the universal credit has been pushed back numerous times. The deadline now is 2023. The government plans to start transferring a few people from the existing benefits or tax credit onto the universal credit from July 2019. That's just two months away. The process is known as managed migration. The Secretary of State has announced that they will begin by transferring around 10,000 people in 2019 as part of a pilot scheme. So you know you're going to be scapegoats, right? Um, the pilot scheme will take place in Harrogate, North Yorkshire. They won't start moving people over to universal credit in great numbers until the pilot scheme has been completed and assessed. They plan to complete this process known as managed migration by December 2023. So at least you don't have to worry about the universal credit um, for everybody. I think some people are on it. I think 11% are on universal credit. And um, so the majority of you will not have to worry about it for now. In January 2019, also the severe disability premium and universal credit benefit change. Um, claimants receiving the severe disability premium in a legacy benefit. Legacy benefit just means uh, one of the old type of benefits, disability allowance, um, child benefits, all the things that are wrapped up into the universal credit now, they call them legacy benefits because you're not getting them anymore or some people are not. Um, I'll have to read that again now. Claimants receiving the severe disability premium in a legacy benefit will not be able to move on to universal credit except through managed migration. That means if they don't decide to accept managed migration, they're not going to get universal credit. Managed migration is where the government transfers people from the existing system over to universal credit. That's what they call managed migration. Managed migration, sorry about the noise of the paper. Managed migration will also be piloted in July 2019 for a few claimants, but doesn't get fully underway until the end of 2020. People moved over, people move over to universal credit by managed migration will not be worse off 
when they are transferred, if they are entitled to less under universal credit than under the benefits that they are being replaced by, they will receive a transitional amount to top up their universal credit to the same amount under managed migration. But what they don't say is that that only applies to income related benefits. They don't mention that. And that is important because some people might think, oh, yeah, I'm going to be topped up and they're going to be made, making plans. And it's selective um, what they top up. It's called the one I'm talking about, the income um, related benefits It's called transitional protection. And that just, yeah, like I said, income based benefits and child tax credit. That's what that takes into account. Okay, February 2019, I think we know this, uh, universal credit, the two-child limit. Um, from 1st of February 2019, families with more than two children who make new claims for universal credit will no longer be directed to claim child tax credit. Instead, the two-child limit will apply to those families who have been awarded universal credit after April 2017 and have two or fewer children, but who then have a third or subsequent child will have the two child limit apply. So at the moment, if you've got two children, you're fine. But if you um, have a child after the two children, then this two child limit will apply. Um, I think for those who've had a child before 2017, I think they could claim if they had three or four or five, they can claim for those, but not after 2017. Pension credit child allowances. From the 1st of February, people on pension credit age who are responsible for a dependent child or children will receive help from the child will receive help with the child or children in the form of dependent allowances paid within the pension credit award. This is because you will no longer be able to make a new claim for tax credits, child tax credit or working tax credit, if you are of pension credit age. April 2019, that's last, mo last month, universal credit work allowance increases. Work allowances are the amount of your earnings from employment that you are allowed to keep before it is taken into account as income for universal credit. These will increase by 1000 for the year, meaning that people in work who have children or have limited capability to work or their partner has limited capability to work will benefit by up to £630 a year. However, if you are a worker who has no children or you or your partner have not been assessed as having limited capability for work, you will not receive help in the form of work allowances. I hope that makes sense. OK, national minimum wage increase. I think most of us know that. This was also in April. The national living wage will increase by 4.9 percent from 7.83 per hour to £8.21 per hour in April 2019. The national minimum wage increases from 7.38 per hour to 7.70 per hour for people aged 21 to 24 and from £5.90 per hour to £6.15 per hour for people aged 18 to 20. If you want more information on that, you can just go to my favourite website, www.gov.uk, and put in minimum wage. OK, so it seems that if you're younger, you don't get that minimum wage. I didn't realise that. I thought it was standard across the board. Um, OK, what have we got next? May. Universal credit and mixed aged couples. I think I, I've done a video on this, but I'll just read it out quickly. From the 15th of May, couples where one partner is aged above pension credit age and the other is aged under pension credit age will no longer be able to make a new claim for pension credit. Instead, they will have to claim universal credit. Mixed age couples on pension credit can continue to remain on pension credit as long as they continue to satisfy the other qualifying conditions for pension credit. 
Now, when I did the last video, some people thought I was talking about pension. I wasn't talking about pension. I did say pension credit. And there is a difference. Pension is what you're, you're given by the government once you reach the qualifying age. Pension credit are those people who, um, because they haven't put enough in the pot, they're supplemented by the government and to bring it up to a certain amount. And that's what they call pension credit. OK, July 2019, which is a couple of months of getaway, the Universal Credit Managed Migration Pilot starts. Benefit claimants in Harrogate in North Yorkshire will be the first to be transferred to Universal Credit by Managed Migration under the pilot scheme. Transitional protection will be available for those taking part in the pilot. Only once the pilot scheme has been completed and assessed will claimants be moved over to universal credit in greater numbers. Now, that transitional protection I was talking about, which only applies to income-related benefits once it's rolled out, is going to apply for the pilot. So, because it's applying to the pilot, it doesn't mean that it's going to apply to everyone. OK, so just bear that in mind. Self-employed minimum income floor grace period. Self-employed people so, whose earnings are low may have their universal credit worked out on a higher earnings than they have. This is called the minimum income floor. If you've started your business within the last 12 months, then the minimum income floor does not affect you for the first 12 months of your universal credit claim. The government have announced that they will extend this 12 months grace period to all people who are who are gainfully self-employed. However, this will not only apply to people who have been transferred over to Universal Credit by Managed Migration from July 2019 at the earliest. However, Oh, sorry. However, this will only apply to people who have been transferred over to Universal Credit by Managed Migration from July 2019 at the earliest. Now, that might sound like gobbledygook, but what it's basically saying, that um, income floor that they're talking about, the, what do they call it? The minimum income floor, grace period. That is... Um, you know, they've set the um, minimum wage at £8, whatever it is, £8.23, I think. If by being self-employed, you haven't met that minimum wage for a period, that is what they're talking about. They will top it up so you actually at least get the minimum wage, even though you're self-employed, when you're claiming. OK, universal credit, but only through managed migration. That means you have to cough up all your details, all your business. OK, so, however, this will only apply to people who have been transferred over to Universal Credit by Managed Migration from July 2019 at the earliest. Self-employed people who make a new Universal Credit claim or have a change of circumstances which moves them onto Universal Credit will not benefit from this change until September 2020. Now, what's happening in summer 2019? OK, from summer 2019, the Scottish government will take control of funeral expenses payments. Just in case anybody is watching from Scotland, the Scottish government are planning to make sure that payments are processed more quickly than under the existing system and to simplify the rules of entitlement. This will only affect people who live in Scotland. So there's going to be some kind of funeral benefit for them. October 2019, this is the Universal Credit Advance Recovery Reduction. From October 2019, the maximum rate at which deductions can be made from Universal Credit to repay an advance payment will be reduced from 40% to 30% on the standard allowance of Universal Credit. So I think that makes, I think that's pretty straightforward. You know, when you go there and they say, oh, can I give you a advance? Um, and you say, yes, please. And they um, want it back within a certain period of time. Um, they're deducting it from 40% to 30%. So that's going to be coming out of your income. I mean, 40% is a hell of a lot. Even 30%, even though they're reducing it to 30%, that's a hell of a lot to repay. 
out of your universal credit. So if I were you, if you can avoid taking that advance and you can get it from any other source, I would do that because 30% of your income, which is meager anyway, is going to be taken out to repay that advance. The period over which advances can be recovered will be extended from 12 to 16 months from October 2021. So from October 2021, you won't have to pay it within 12 months. You can pay it within 16 months. That might ease the burden a little bit. Um, this is the last one. You may have to pay tax charge known as the high income child benefit charge if you have an individual income of over 50,000. This is not new news. Um, you and your partner get child benefits, someone else gets child benefit, the child living with you, and they contribute at least an equal amount towards the child upkeep. I put that in there because, only because for those people who didn't realise that when they get child benefit, if they earn over 50000 a year, they have to um, pay a proportion back, and if they owe earn over 60,000 a year, they have to, they're not entitled to 60, they're not entitled to child benefit. So I stuck that in there anyway. But I thought, I'm hoping that those benefit changes um, are useful or helpful. Um, if you knew them, maybe it serves as a reminder. And if you didn't know, it serves as um, awareness raising. And that's all for now. Bye bye.